Hey, Gaming Geek here with another video tutorial on how to paint this tribal fort. But before we do that, I want to congratulate last month's Patreon raffle winner, which was T. Hayden. So congrats to T. Hayden for winning one of Table Wars Fat Mats. This month's giveaway is going to be the Governor's Mansion from Printable Scenery. And so here I have my painted version. The winner will be receiving this unpainted version, but it is primed. This is one of my favorite um, buildings from their line, and I really think it is an awesome building. If you want to have a chance at winning this prize for the month of June of 2019, go ahead and click below and sign up to be a patron on my Patreon page. For every dollar, you will get one raffle ticket, which will give you an opportunity to win. This week I wanted to showcase the tribal line from Printable Scenery as um, I never really intended on printing these out but uh, with the Kickstarter where I got all of these buildings I also received the STL files for the tribal line as well. So with Warcry that's coming out this summer I thought it would be great to have some scenery that represents a little bit more the theme for that and so I went ahead and printed up a number of these buildings and I am really impressed. I think they look very, very cool. And so here we have a couple of examples uh, from that line and I think thematically it looks fantastic and I think will work great with Warcry. Here we have the Tribal Tower, which I think looks really, really good. And the paint scheme for these is uh, takes a little bit more time than with my regular buildings. Uh, and if you missed that video on how to paint these buildings, go ahead and click here. And you'll be able to see the video where I go through a tutorial of how to paint these kind of buildings. But um, today you can use a method that I use to paint all of these other buildings that I'm showcasing right now. Also are the shaman huts. And one of the things that I had to do is print the top at 98% because what I did was when I printed the top at 100%, it actually wouldn't fit onto um, the lower half. And so these function as uh, not just shaman huts, but just regular huts for uh, all of my characters here. This is the a burial platform and thought this would just be an alternative to all these shaman huts that are around the village. Uh, this one over here, I really like this building a lot. This is the Witch Temple, and this building is really cool. And so I think that all these bones that make up the roof looks really cool as well. And then back here, right hot off of the presses, are the stackable rocks. And I haven't painted these yet, but um, there's four of these, and they're pretty sizable, as you can see. I thought they were going to be smaller, but this uh, regular size... Uh, is pretty impressive and so I'm definitely going to print these out. Uh, there's another two different rocks they can they can stack together uh, and I think this will provide variation in height for Warcry or other games. So really excited about this line but today we are showcasing this model here the Tribal Fort and I think this thing looks awesome. It reminds me of the tower that you can build in Warcraft. I think it was Warcraft 2 um, or 3. I don't quite remember, but it really looks like that tower uh, for, I think it was for the humans. But um, I really like this thing a lot. I think it has a lot of impressive detail. I figured out a color scheme that will work off of just the dark brown primer so you don't have to spray paint it gray and then other parts brown like I did with my houses. This is primed just with brown. And so that makes uh, painting easier, but it will take quite a bit of time. As you can tell, there are a lot of pieces here compared to one of these houses, the townhouses. So I think it's worth it though. I think it turned out really, really awesome. I also have the ruined one, the ruined version over here, and that as well is fairly impressive. So let's go ahead and without further ado, go into the tutorial on how I painted this tower. So let's go ahead and take a look at the paint scheme that I have for the tribal set. And we have some uh, four basic colors that are going on. So first thing that we do is spray base 
everything with this earth brown from Rust-Oleum Camouflage 2 times X. This is what I use for all of my browns. If you don't have this brand, just get the darkest brown possible and spray paint everything with that. Uh, after you do that, there's basically four colors that we're using. Terracotta, uh, this is Toffee Berlingot. We're going to use Antique Gold for the ropes and the Georgia Clay for the stone. You can use um, the gray for the stone if you want and if you want to see that color scheme go ahead and click here for my painting tutorial of my uh, town pieces. That will show you the colors for the gray but I wanted to do something different for the base stones rather than gray and so uh, that's why I used this Georgia clay which is also the tile roofs for my town set so a uh, little bit less and then as you see here the ropes I'm using this antique gold which is a little bit yellowish uh, for this and then for any of the uh, bones I'm using this toffee but the first step that we're going to take with this tower is to paint all of the stones. And the reason why we're going to tackle the stones first is because it is the most recessed and as usual we want to do the most recessed areas first because the uh, areas that stick up above that will be um, easier to paint after we do the most recessed sections. And because my stone is all red, I'm going to use this Georgia clay. So I'm going to get a large, broad uh, horsehair brush, like I use for all of my terrain, and squirt some of this out. Use quite a bit of it. And then grab some of it here. And you can start on the inside if you want just to practice but basically just brushing it on and getting all of the stone it's a little bit hard to see because it's dark in here while, where I'm painting. See if the light shines in there a little bit. But I just liberally spread that around. And if you've watched some of my other videos where I paint train, I don't do a whole lot with the insides because for the most part uh, with my terrain pieces um, they're just functioning on the tabletop uh, from the outside. Oh no look I broke off a spike somewhere. Oh, I think it was right here. And, and that's one of the um, hard things about these pieces is because their strength the way that these are layered, uh, these spiky bits can fall off, so you got to be a little careful uh, when you're painting. But with these towers, I'm not going to bother uh, painting that on. So go ahead and color the stone. And as you can see, I don't care if I'm getting it onto what's later going to be painted as wood. So I'm not being super careful about where this is going. I just want to make sure that all of the stone is getting this on it. As you can see, I'm keeping the recesses dark, this dark brown.
So you want to be careful that your paint isn't too wet. Alright, so as you can see here, I finished doing all of the stone and I did go through with a second coat of it just to brighten it up just a little bit. And so, like I mentioned before, it doesn't matter that you got it all over uh, these other parts because now the next step is to do the brown, which is the terracotta. And we're going to basically cover everything. Uh, even the bones, pretty much everything else is going to be a dry brush with this terracotta. So let's go ahead and do that. And get that on there. And then just brush it on. And basically trying not to get it onto the um, stone. You do want to go over these parts that we did get the red on that isn't supposed to be red. Everything that is wood or bone basically giving it this color. And then some of the smaller bits will have to or edges will have to go through with um, a smaller brush. And see how the way that I am brushing it I'm still keeping quite a bit of the brown, the dark brown, in the recesses that's providing a shadow and shading for that section. And even here, even if you get a little bit onto the stone, that's okay too. It's not a big deal. Alright, so check out what it looks like at this phase. We have both the brown and the red stone. And it looks pretty good. So the next phase we are going to be using our toffee berlingot. And this is only going to go on everything that is bone. So if we grab this guy over here, um, all of these tusks, whatever they are, and the skulls is what we're going to be coloring. So I'm going to use a still a pretty big brush. And then start from the top. to basically put on a layer of this lighter color and as you can see here I don't care that I'm getting it onto the canvas part or the ropes because I'm going to go in later and fill those in. And Use your judgment in terms of how thickly you want that on there. And then here, you want to be more careful because you don't want to put it onto the wood. So what I'm going to do is just do these spikes. And see how I don't go all the way down to the bottom so that you get that fade where closer to the bottom is darker. 
So you're almost getting an airbrush effect where things are fading in and out from one another. And so, and the key to this is that your brush is dry. I didn't dip this at all into the water. So it enables it to get this faded out effect. And then with the skulls, uh, again, you want to be careful. I might transfer to the smaller brush because uh, these parts are actually wood and I don't want to uh, get those pieces. So um, you're just trying to get the skulls in like this. And again, uh, don't bother like going to the very edge. You know, that's good enough. Uh, in the same way that I didn't mask off the red stone here and it sort of is fading out. Again, so, uh, similar to an airbrush effect, you're, you're not needing to go to the very edges and it's okay if some of the colors bleed over. <clears throat> and so even with a big fat brush like this, I can get the pieces that I want and you don't really have to get it, um, you know, again, to the very edges because you have that dark brown acting as a shade. In the background so but I might still go ahead and, and transfer over to my smaller brush that will give me a little bit more control uh, to do these skulls and it's not a big deal again if you get it onto parts that you don't want because you can always go back and recolor them uh, but for the most part I always feel like with terrain it doesn't have to be as detailed. So I typically don't go back and make corrections unless I made a pretty big mistake. Um, and I'll sh show you uh, one part where I will make a correction. Let's get these skulls first. See how I accidentally got this wood section here? So I'm going to go back later and put this uh, right there in the wood. Because that's a big enough mistake that I'm going to go ahead and do that. But there's a couple of spots. I need to get these skeletons and skulls. Okay, so for these really small skulls, I did have to bust out my sable brush just to dab them a little bit like that. Just because my horsehair brushes couldn't get in there without getting all over the wood, so. All right, so next what we want to do is the ropes, and what I use is antique gold for that. And I will use a sable brush, small sable brush, as I will be detailing uh, all of the ropes. And for the most part, you just want to highlight you know, the places that you see uh, ropes happening. And you're sort of dry brushing it because there's raised parts to the ropes. Actually, I don't think that's a rope, but I don't think it matters too much. Um. and see how I'm allowing the shape of the rope, the recesses to remain a darker brown. Thank you. 
All right, now that I got the ropes all done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the cloth, which is here and here and on the back. And the color I'm choosing is this green because green is complementary to a complementary color to the red. And so let's see how this turns out. Now I'm just using a regular uh, sable brush because I want it to be a solid color. So I'll go ahead and do this and show you what it looks like. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but uh, whether or not I'm gonna highlight it, lighten it up with some yellow or some white. But let's go ahead and take a look after I'm done painting all of this. I think that green looks good. This is avocado, by the way. And the final painting step is to do this hand. And I think I will just use the yellow that I used for the rest of the ropes. So, it should be relatively simple. All right, looks good. I forgot one last color, I need silver. Any silver will do because of the chain that is right here at the bottom. So this is what it looks like finished. I think it looks awesome. I think it turned out really well. And then all of these different layers that are in there. And the details on this is really, really good. Uh, I'm really impressed and I like the colors as well, how it turned out. Ruined up one here looks awesome as well. So these guys turned out really well. I think they look awesome. And so check it out for yourself. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you. Go ahead and hit subscribe and we will see you next time.